These are terminologies that you should be familiar with. And the first terminology we are looking at is the application server. The application server is a computer that is responsible for hosting applications to user workstation. So when you're in a workstation or you're in your, or your laptop, you know, and you want to view an application or you want to view uh, something on your internet or even within your intranet, the application server is where you host all the applications that you can run on your uh, workstation. So there are several ways in which this can be deployed. But to get familiar with it, application server is a computer responsible for hosting applications to workstations. The second terminology you need to familiar, be familiar with here is asymmetric encryption. This is an algorithm that uses one key to encrypt and a different key to decrypt the input plain text. If you remember in the previous videos where we were talking about uh, encryption, asymmetric explains what happened with the type of encryption whereby the key you used to encode it or the key you used to encrypt is different from the key you used to decrypt. Checksum. Checksum is basically a digit represent the sum of correct digits in a piece of stored or transmitted digital data against which later comparison can be made to detect error. So checksum is basically a small, uh, it's like something that you use to identify or detect error. So if you are sending a message and you add some checksum with it, so you can use the checksum to, if the information or the details you have in the checksum is correct or is, is correct when in comparison to what you have been you know, told or what the device has been you know, alerted to check, you're able to detect that errors have uh, occurred or errors did not occur. So it's basically transmitted to later check. So after transmission has been done, checksum is what you use to update or not update, is what you use to confirm that the information you have or uh, being transmitted to you is still intact and there's no there are no errors in it. Uh, another term, other terminologies include ciphertext. Ciphertext is the altered form of a plain text message so it is unreadable for anyone except intended recipients so this is basically you are like turning a plain text into a secret and transmitting it so it's called cipher text classification so this is the we are talking about data a classification of data so this identifies the degree of harm that the data can cause to an organization or stakeholders that might result you know if an information is divulged or unauthorized person gains access you know, to this data. So classification is basically saying that this data is very harmful or the degree of sensitivity of the data. So if you classify data as very uh, critical, for instance, it means that that data, if anything happens to it, it can, or if that data is being divulged or goes into the wrong hands, it can cause critical, critical you know, harm to the organization. So there are basically different types of classification. We, can, we also talked about it in the previous videos. Another terminology we need to take note of is configuration management, which was explained earlier on also, which is a process and discipline used to ensure that the only changes made to a system are those that have been authorized and validated. So configuration is ensuring the right changes are made by the right person. Cryptography is study or applications of methods used to protect the meaning of contents of messages. So this is where encryption comes out of. So basically what you are saying, you are using a method, you are using doing something to protect, you know, the confidentiality of an information. So you can, it's like you are disguising or you're causing obscuring or making some transformations to your data in such a way that someone that looks at it will not understand it, but you that have the key and the answer or the key or the algorithm to that was used to encrypt it, you can also decode the message. Then another terminology here is data loss prevention. Data loss prevention is basically talking about system capabilities designed to designed to detect and prevent the unauthorized use and transmission of information. So basically, like it sounds, you are preventing data loss. So when you have a capability within your system that enables or that makes it you know, difficult or impossible for information to be you know, stolen on you anyhow. So it's data loss. You are preventing data loss, basically. So data loss prevention is, is a system capability. Uh, another domain terminology we look at here is decryption. 
which is the opposite of encryption. So basically, you are now converting it, a cipher text back into a plain text. For decryption to happen, that means an encryption must have happened. That means a word or a normal, a normal plain text or data has been converted or obscurated into something and given a key, and you are now using the key or a specified key to unravel what has been encrypted earlier on. Then we have degaussing, which is a technique of erasing data on disk or tape, including video tapes that when properly or when performed properly, it ensures there is insufficient magnetic remanence to reconstruct data. So what you are saying is that you know when you clean a, a, a hard disk, for instance, or you wipe your flash drive, there are still information. That's why the fact that you have erased it, there are still certain information that if you use certain uh, algorithm or certain tools, you can recover the information that you have deleted. You know, but the gossing is a process that of making sure that you cannot recover what has been deleted or what has been erased from a data or from, from a data storage. So this is uh, a process, you know, completely ensuring that data is completely wiped out. Then we have digital signature. Digital signature signature is the result of a cryptographic transformation of data. You know, when properly implemented, provides services of original authentication data integrity. Basically, what we are saying here is that a signature is like uh, putting your thumbprint or putting your name or putting something that identifies the authenticity of that uh, data, of that asset. Uh, for instance, your website or your web page now, you can have a signature or maybe it could be a file, a signature that will identify that this is the source or this is the person that created this file. So it is commonly used in, uh, by antivirus you know, it checks digital signatures of files. So when a virus has been known, the digital signature of such virus is kept in a database. And at some later, when another file is known, I want to check if that file is a virus, you compare the digital signature. So basically, it's, uh, it's authenticating the origin of the file. And it's all about data integrity. Uh, other terminologies include egress monitoring. This is monitoring of outgoing network. Uh, in your traffic or outgoing network traffic, hardening you know, is a process of ensuring that a data or a, a process of applying a secure configuration. The essence is to reduce the attack surface. So, for instance, now if you are hardening your network, it means that you are making it more secure, making it more difficult for um, an attacker to penetrate your network. Ash function. Hash function is an algorithm that computes the numerical value called the hash value on data file or electronic message that is used to represent a file or message. So basically what we are saying, hash function is what is used to carry out hashing. You know, this function helps to you know, compute the hash value of a particular data. So when you have an hash function and you apply it to a data, the data will not be will become hashed and then you get a hash value which is used to ensure or to confirm the integrity of your files or data then we have hashing so hashing is a process you know that is using the mathematical algorithm against data to produce a numerical value that is representative so it is the process of using that hash function you know or it involves using of half hash function that was mentioned uh, just before this. So hashing is the process of using a mathematical algorithm against data. And you know the essence is to get a numerical value that we call hash value, which is used to verify the integrity of data. Ingress monitoring. Ingress monitoring is monitoring of incoming network traffic. Then we have message digest. Message digest is a digital signature. Remember, we explained this digital signature earlier on. So, message that is this digital signature that uniquely identifies data and has a property such that if something changes within the data, it will cause a different message digest to be completely generated. It's almost like hashing, except for the fact that it's not secured like hashing. It's not, it's not something that uh, maybe is irreversible like hashing. You know, the process is a bit is different. But message digest is generated as a signature and any changes you make to the original file or data that generates the digest will change the value of the 
digest. So it's basically it's another way of you know um, ensuring the data integrity when transmitting you know data between network or devices. Patch. Patch basically is a software company. So when you install a patch, it modifies a file or device settings or even configuration at times within your software without changing the version or the number of release. So patch is usually uh, used to like an update. So when you have a software in your system and there are certain changes, maybe a zero day attack happened and then a vulnerability that was not seen before has now been discovered. So instead of you to say you are releasing a new software completely and changing the version of the software, you can just release a patch, which when you install it on your existing software, it will just fix whatever uh, is wrong with the earlier version you are using, but it will still retain it at the same version to just like, you know, maybe check some vulnerabilities, check some things that need to be changed there, maybe some faults or some bugs, remove this and fix it and make sure the software is, you know, is better than where what it was earlier on without changing the version you know of the software on which you have uh, installed the patch then we have a uh, patch management so this is systematic notification identification deployment installation and verification of operating system and application software code revision basically what this is saying is it is managing the idea of installing of patches. So when you have patch management, we are saying that you have a system that automatically checks if the software on your system needs a new patch or needs, uh, uh, if there's a release of a new patch, it automatically checks the database and ensures that, okay, there's a new patch that's been released. You need to update your own software so that the patch can be installed and then make it more secure. So basically patch management is managing patch installation in your device. Then we have remanence. You know, this is the residual information remaining on the storage media after clearing. Like I mentioned earlier, when you wipe off a, wipe off a CD or your, or your hard drive, there is still residual information that can be extracted from an erased drive. So remanence is what you call the residual information. So degaussing, like I mentioned earlier, is what is used to ensure that the remanence inside or your hard drive is not useful it cannot be recovered or reconstructed into anything then we have requests for change so this is the first stage of a change management so before every change happens within an organization there must be a request i remember in the earlier videos uh, we explained it before a change happens someone must be responsible for initiating the change a request must be made you can't just apply changes or cause a change within an organization or within your network or within your device without someone requesting the need for a change for example like someone a, a popular uh balance is that if you don't if you don't break it you don't fix it if there's no if there's no error if there's no problem you can not just come up and say you want to change the configuration you want to change you no know, settings in your device there must be a request for a change so this is the first stage first stage of change management then we have security governance security governance is entire the is the entirety of the policies rules and processes an organization uses to make security decisions. So security governance is basically talking about what guides, what you know, uh, what supervises how security decisions are made. You know, what are the processes, what are the rules, the people involved, what are the policies, what are the standards that are being followed, are there, any, are there any laws or regulations? All these fall under security governance. Then we have social engineering. Social engineering is basically tactics to infiltrate uh your email could be your phone text social media you know it's usually most of the time it's impersonation but are people trying to use your some uh some sociological or social things to uh or psychological things to guess to get access you know to you so it's basically when you're talking about social engineering it is most of the time it's not technical it's a low-tech method usually maybe just people trying to use psychology to know what you say or you to guess your name guess your dates of birth you know uh, these are all social engineering symmetric encryption this is the opposite of asymmetric encryption this is when you use the same key and the same algorithm that you use in encrypting data to decrypt you know, i mean to decrypt the data so when you use the same key or the same algorithm we call it symmetric encryption then we have a web server 
web server is basically some uh, a server just like an application server is a server in case of web server it's where your the world wide web information or services on the internet is stored so web server basically stores web pages so when you go into a website you search www.cyberculturalinterface.com the files that opens what you see is stored on the web server so it's the web server includes the hardware the operating system uh the web server software and the website content that it carries then we have a whaling attack whaling attack is a phishing attack that attempts to or is targeted towards highly placed individuals within the organization for instance when you are targeting the ceo of an organization the cfo you are targeting the president of a country you are targeting high profile people within the society society this like these are people that are referred to as wills you know so high network individuals people who when you get to them it they it to make news or it's something uh there are people that have high profile in society so we call them wills so willing attack is when fighting attack is targeted towards these people we call wills these are high people people with high network assets within the society this is all for the uh for that we'll be considering for domain terminologies under domain five and this is the last video in the series of domain five which is security operations so uh thank you for watching the series uh watch out for the next videos where we are going to be taking some of these topics and breaking it down further thank you this is